All right, guys, Zachman18 here. Welcome back to the WTZM TV Channel 18 Superstation. It is time for the next part of Miles Edgeworth Ace Attorney Investigations on the Nintendo DS. This is part number six, I believe. And uh, I think we're going to be uh, uh, wrapping up episode two, Turnabout Airlines, and part two, it says on here. So let's start it back up. And the cargo hold right now. Bringing down Miss Meal. We're kind of suspecting her now. Miss Meal? Miss Meal? Huh? Do you recall what you said earlier about when you answered some service calls as we were departing from Zheng Fa? Huh? You said that Mr. Hicks was sitting in his seat at that time. However, that is simply not possible because Mr. Hicks was dead long before we ever touched down in Zheng Fa. Oh? Miss Kemi Meal? Um, maybe I didn't see what I thought I did. No one can make a mistake so large, Miss Meal. Um, but I make that kind of boo-boo all the time. Ugh. This is going nowhere. There must be a better way of resolving this contradiction. Very well, Miss Meal, if you please tell me about your alibi during the time span. From just before we were to land at 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. when the body was found. Are you telling me I'm a suspect, Mr. Edgeworth? Indeed. Time for a testimony. Good God. Mm. Oh, um, yeah. From 3 to 4, I was, um, in the flight attendant's room, all by my lonesome self. Mm. Oh, um, yeah, and from 5 to 6, I was, um, in the flight attendant's room, all by my lonesome self. <laughs> what? How is a man supposed to react to a testimony like that? Miss Meal, wake up! Ah. Uh, <sighs> oh, she fell asleep again. It looks like the only way I'm going to be able to wake her up is by pressing her. Alright, here we go. Is this our only statement we have? <laughs> That's not a statement. Okay, this one's good. Let's try this one. Hold it! If I remember correctly, food was being served in first class in the lounge. Between the hours of 3 and 4 a.m. Yeah, but that kind of stuff's run by Miss Rhoda. And what were you doing in the attendance room at that, at that time? Eating and then having a most delicious dream. You mean you were neglecting your duties? No way. Sydney's part of our job, T, you know. Oh, God. <sighs> Alright, this one's from 5 to 6. So you were alone the entire time, were you? Yeah, no one else even popped their head in to say hi. Oh, well, I think a contradiction just popped in to say hi. What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Shabam! Miss Meal, there is a clear contradiction embedded in your testimony. Huh? What are you talking about? It's not possible that you were alone in the attendance room the whole time from 5 to 6 a.m. Yeah, that uh, piece, little piece of paper, where is it? Uh, is it the, uh, what, is it? what was it called? Yeah, it was a suitcase receipt from uh, Tenero. It was at 5.40 a.m., which was between that time. Take that! I wonder if you would be so kind as to take a look at this receipt, Miss Meal. Huh? A receipt? For what? It's from the suitcase Miss Tenero bought. Now, if I might direct your attention to the timestamp. As you can see, it clearly says 5.40 a.m. Miss Tenero! Yes? Huh? Why is the killer here? I thought you'd have her locked up by now. I'm requesting that she be present, present as a witness so that we may straighten out your complex lie. Now then, Miss Tenero, between the hours of 5 and 6 a.m., you took a trip from first class down to the first floor and flight shop, correct? Yes, I went to the shop to buy a suitcase, after which I went straight to the attendance room to drop it off. And did you see Miss Meal there at that time? Um, no. So, Miss Meal, where were you really between the hours of 5 and 6 a.m.? Miss Kimmy Meal! Huh? Uh, um, the bathroom. I'll be the one to ask the questions here. Yeah, maybe that's it. I probably just missed her. Natural nature called, you know. Do you take me for a fool? That's a little too convenient to be true. Um, but it's the truth. Cross my heart. Hmm, I don't have enough conclusive proof to counter-argue her at this stage. You don't believe me, do you? But please, won't you give me a chance and you hear me out? Okay, you're gonna be awake now? <laughs> Look, I know you're suspecting me because I'm one of the crew, but you think that maybe she, you should also suspect Miss Rhoda too. She's the one in charge of the elevator key card and the shop, you know. If you ask me, that makes her super suspicious. Please leave Miss Tenero out of the conversation. Only you are under suspicion for now. I don't get it. Why are you covering for Miss Rhoda all of a sudden? 
Oh, now I get it. Maybe you've got your eye on Miss Rhoda. Of course I'm keeping an eye on her. I can't very well let her escape, can I? Never mind. But you want to know something? Miss Rhoda actually kind of... I have absolutely no interest in people who can't appreciate my sense of design. Now's not the time for this sort of talk. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, it's not the only reason I have for suspecting you. Your statements regarding Mr. Hicks also turned out to be a bunch of lies. Ah, but say I wasn't an attendant. You wouldn't suspect me then, would you? Hmm, yes, I suppose that's true enough. Hold it! She's already being detained for further questioning, or have you already forgotten? Oh, yeah, I guess I just forgot. Cammy, don't tell me you suspect me, too. Sorry, I can't help it. I mean, other than you, there's no one else who could have done it. I can't believe you would think that. I mean, me, a killer? Miss Mia, what did you mean just now by no one else who could have done it? Hold it! And what are you in charge of, Miss Meal? Um, I take care of the attendance room. That doesn't count. Ah, uh, but I spend so much time in there, it might as well be my responsibility. Mr. Edgeworth, Cammy is very talented in languages. So she assists passengers who may not speak English, especially those who speak Bulgarian. She's the only one on this flight who is fluent. Oh, you mean that kind of, what am I in charge of? Why didn't you say so in the first place? What else can I have meant? Yeah, so I'm really good at Borgenian. She's fluent in Borgenian? And I suppose you're in charge of processing documents in Borgenian. Yeah, I take care of anything that has to do with Borgenian. Hmm, very interesting. Alright. Oh wait, this is a... Just over here, all I'm in charge of are the attendance room and some Borgenian... Borgenian stuff. Is that the only thing? Was that the only stuff that she was in charge of? Oh, we can have her encrypt this for us since it's in Borgenian, this certificate. OBJECTION! So you are the only one in this flight crew that speaks Borgenian. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, I guess so. I studied abroad in Borgenia for a while. If that is the case, then the signature on this sync document belongs to you, doesn't it? This is a falsified piece of document documentation with only one purpose. To lead anyone who reads to believe that Mr. LeBlanc's st statue was loaded in Europe. The only person who could have either prepared or processed this document in Borgenian is you, Miss Meal. She's the only one who knows on the plane. Without your participation, the smuggling of the elite bread could not have occurred. Don't sleep while I'm pointing my finger at you. Oh, I wouldn't dream of f falling asleep on you, Mr. Edgeworth. It is exactly as you say. Are you confessing to having participated in the smuggling? No, far from it. It's true that I was the one who signed off on that document. But you can't use that fact alone to make your allegations of smuggling stick. There's no direct correlation after all. All you have is my signature on a piece of paper. Really? All you did was sign it. I neglected to check if the cargo had been loaded onto the plane properly. So sorry about that. Hmm. It seems that she's finally woken up. This is going to be t one tough fight. Suppose, and this is just a supposition, even if I was involved in smuggling, you can't throw the charge of murder on me just like that. If you were involved in the smuggling, you would have, you would have a strong motive to kill. Agent Hicks was in the middle of an investigation regarding a smuggling ring, and just when he was about to close in, he's killed by a member of that ring. Well, did you ever stop to think that maybe Rhoda is a smuggling ring member? After all, unlike me, Rhoda has access to many things in this plane for work purposes. Hmm, so perhaps there is some element of a setup at play in this case. What are you talking about? Don't worry, I wasn't talking about you. I mean, I meant the killer. First it was myself, and now it's Mestinero who is under the microscope. Seems to me that our killer is going to great lengths to pin this crime on anyone they can. You have no proof that Rhoda is being set up or that she isn't. Actually, I believe that she was indeed the intended target from the very beginning. I believe that the plan was to push all the blame for the crime onto her. And this evidence will prove my suspicions. This proves that the killer was out to frame Miss Sinero from the very beginning. Because the killer used the suitcase to put the body in, and she was the one who made the design. Take that! The killer could have hidden the body anywhere, and yet they chose the suitcase. 
Why is that? Perhaps it was to move the body up from the lower deck to the first floor. However, why go through the trouble to do so? The only way all these actions make sense is if the killer had wanted to frame Mr. Nero for the murder. Mr. Nero buys a suitcase on every flight she works without fail. But should her suitcase be switched with the old one containing the victim's body, that would put her in a very tight spot. Unfortunately for the killer, the turbulence put an end to that plan. Hmm. There wasn't enough time to put the body back into the suitcase. Ergo, they made do with whoever was at hand adapted their plan, and tried to frame me as I lay unconscious on the floor from the turbulence. The killer then went to hide the suitcase in the in-flight shop, and brought the piggy bank back to the elevator in order to fabricate a false weapon. A lot of work for a fruitless endeavor, wouldn't you agree? Sounds like the killer had a tough time too, huh? I mean, why did the killer need to frame someone that badly anyway? That is because of the special circumstances surrounding this particular case. What special circumstance dictated the need for the killer to frame someone? Where the murder took place, when the murder took place, or who the murder victim was. Let's start at the top and let's go with where the murder took place. The special circumstance is simply that the murder took place on a plane mid-flight. No matter which country, customs was quite strict in this day and age. So no matter what you do, the chances that the body will be found is very high. Therefore, there was no choice but to frame either Mr. Tenero or myself. In other words, the only one who fits within the boundaries of the criminal's movements is not Miss Tenero or myself. But you, Miss Camille, the only you and you alone could be the killer. Yeah. And? Huh? Are you done already? I was about to fall asleep again. Anyway, let's be honest here. You don't have anything on me other than a whole lot of circumstantial evidence. Ugh. I can see the outline of how the murder occurred, but I have no definitive evidence. And isn't there a piece of evidence that's still unaccounted for? Something that I still can't quite fit into the big picture. Um, not the prosecutor's badge, not the travel wallet, not the notes, not the Sky Magazine, not the photo. Missing cell phone. The victim had one. It went missing. Oh, does she have the phone? Take that! Take that. I don't have any actual evidence. I thought not. But that's because it went missing and still is. Missing? What do you mean by that? In the complex puzzle is the case, there was one piece I kept getting stuck on. I was kept getting stuck on. And that is the victim's cell phone. Francisca, you were waiting at the airport for a phone call from Agent Hicks' cell phone. Or at least that's what you told me. That's right. But Agent Hicks' cell phone could not be found at the crime scene. You mean the killer took the phone with you mean the killer took the phone with them? Precisely, I suspect that if we were to find that phone, it would lead us to the killer. Haha, <laughs> come on, get serious. Huh? If the victim fell to his death from that height, wouldn't his phone break as well? We won't know that until we try a little experiment, will we? Francisca, I'd like to ask for your assistance. You know the victim's phone number, do you not? Of course I do. Oh. Agent Hicks phone, it's ringing from somewhere, sir. I hear it, Detective. Now, where is it coming from? Oh, we have to find it? Do we have to go where it's, like, the loudest? Can we go up the stairs? Oh, we can. Oh, it's louder here. No, it's... Is it... There's no way it's Tenero's. The ring is coming from somewhere in here, sir. We have no stone on turn, Detective Gumshoe. We must find it. Oh, is it in the locker? The ring is coming from in here, sir. Oh, my God. What? No, it can't be. This has got to be the victim's cell phone. Just whose locker is this, sir? It's Miss Tenero's. What? Oh, my God. Holy crap. So Mr. Edgeworth, how did it go? Where did you find the phone? I found it in the flight attendant's room, in Miss Tenero's locker. What? But... Go to Tenero. I don't know anything about the phone. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Miss Von Karma, is it? I suggest you arrest Miss Rhoda Tenero right away. Wait, I have a theory. This is related to the incident with the key card. When the killer went to steal the key card, they conveniently stashed the cell phone in Miss Tenero's locker at the same time. Objection! This is related to the key card, all right? In the same way that we have zero proof that the killer did just that. Ugh. 
The only voice that sings the truth is evidence. That is the one bird we cannot ignore. What should I do? Francisca's right. I can't offer baseless conjectures at this point. Alright then. Why did the culprit take the cell phone from Agent Hicks? It must have something very incriminating on or, on or in it. Hold it! What now, Miles Edgeworth? It's not over yet. We have yet to figure out why the killer took the phone. What? Inside this phone lies the final piece of incriminating evidence that will point us to our killer. We need to examine this phone in more detail. Alright. So... Who should we try to... Well, there's the camera on the back of here. Oh, it's a camera lens! Come to think of it, I wonder... How exactly was Agent Hicks planning to preserve the crime scene of the smuggling? Francisca, I need you to confirm something. This cell phone, can it take pictures? Mr. Edgeworth, I can't believe you don't know about this kind of basic stuff, sir. This looks like a very similar model to my own, and mine can take photos just fine. Do you think Agent Hicks could have taken some pictures with this? In particular, pictures as evidence for a smuggling case. If so, I'd say there may be some very inconvenient photos in here for our killer smuggler. But the phone's all busted up, sir. Even a super prosecutor can't repair a broken phone. Ugh, I'll find a way, don't you worry about that. May I go back to sleep now? Objection! LCD screens on the inside and outside are broken, that's for sure. But that's also reason enough to believe that the killer was, wasn't able to erase the, the data. What? What do you mean by that, Francisca? It looks like our killer isn't very familiar with electronics. This phone still rang when I called it, meaning that only the LCD screens are broken. It's possible that the photos are still there inside, waiting to be accessed. All we need to do is transfer the data to my phone. Fran Franziska, your phone if you please. Very well. It's transferring. Alright, displaying it now. Whoa. This is... Agent Hicks was most certainly trying to obtain some evidence for his smuggling case. Hey, the Aleve Red's nowhere in this pic, sir. But this has no meaning as a piece of evidence in this murder case, right? Oh, she's oh, she's right. There's not much we can find out from this about Agent Hicks' killer, sir. Is this it? Is this the end? Is there really nothing in this photo that we can use? All right, so we gotta find something in here. Um, so what are these boxes over here for? What's all this? Huh? Oh, they are cargo ship from Burgundy to Zhengfa. I don't remember his voice again. So the reason they aren't here now is that they were dropped off in Zhengfa. Mr. LeBlanc, can you tell me the contents of the boxes? Unfortunately, there is no English written on them anywhere. Huh, one cluster of boxes is written in Borginian. It says, it is cloth in English. Cloth? Could it be? Is this where the killer? What, for what is it? Where for is that scary face? Miss Meal? Yes. It appears that Agent Hicks was no ordinary investigator. Huh? He left us with a piece of evidence after all. A striking piece that will point out who his killer is. Ha! Huh. Maybe you should enforce your mistaken reading of a simple picture, Mr. Edgeworth. A Burgundian cargo and this piece of evidence will point us straight to the killer. Point the Burgundian cargo and the boxes. And then the, the cargo. And what's the other thing that's Borginian? Oh yeah, the, the bloody cloth that was in the suitcase. Ha ha! Take that! And what is that supposed to prove? The killer used this piece of cloth to wipe up the blood they had spilt. But there was one thing that bothered me this whole time. Where did it come from? And now I have finally found my answer in this very photo. The cargo that was unloaded in junk by a cloth written on it. In, Borg in Borginian, that is. Oh! That thing says bed sheets on it. Ah! That's right. That's the thing. That's right. The killer was someone who could read and understand Borginian. And the only crew member that fits that description is you, Miss Camille. Ha! Huh, that's pretty flimsy. The killer probably searched through all the boxes looking for something to use. When you're frantic, you don't care if the box is in English or Borginian. Sorry, but I cannot agree with your assessment of the killer's indiscriminate, indiscriminate nature. What? There was no need for the killer to tear through boxes at random at all. And if the killer supposedly could not comprehend Proganian, well then... Logically, the killer would have opened this box first. 
The one that says bed sheets. Take, Take that. that. Hey, it says bed sheets in English right on the box, sir. Precisely, the bed sheets would be perfect for cleaning up blood, wouldn't you say? So what are you trying to say? And if I were the criminal, this box of bed sheets would have been what I would have spotted first. However, the killer chose to use some Borghinian cloth. Do you have an explanation for that? The killer didn't want anyone to know that the real scene of the crime was this cargo hold, so they were afraid to leave signs on the box where the sheets had been opened. However, the Borghinian cloth, well, that's a horse of a different color. Because the killer knew that it was going to be unloaded in the Republic of Zhengfa? That's right. That is why the Borghinian cloth was used. And the only Borghinian reader on board who could make such a calculated decision is you, Camille. You and you alone. Ah. Uh, it would be very easy for us to confirm if any of the boxes were resealed. All we would have to do is contact the Zhengfa authorities in time. We may even find out uh, other evidence to incriminate our killer within those boxes. Ah. Uh, so what do you say, Miss Meal? Why not confess to your, to your crime here and now? Or would you rather wait and see what we find out from, from our investigation, investigation in Zhengfa? He was Interpol. I couldn't stop it. I brought him here. He started taking pictures. I couldn't be found out. I was scared. I was in trouble. I... I... Uh, I... We've finished making all the arrangements to take the suspect in, sir. Very good, detective. What about the smuggling route? Did she say anything about that? We're taking her down to the precinct now. Hopefully we can get more out of her there. Whenever we even approached the topic, she just started foaming at the mouth. It was scary, sir. She probably wasn't prepared to commit a murder all of a sudden. One thing is for sure, the ring behind this whole mess really means serious business. It looks like there is a lot more in this case than meets the eye. Mr. Edgeworth, I just wanted to say how much I appreciate everything you did. Thank you very much. It was nothing. In fact, I should be the one thanking you for your cooperation. But truly, if it wasn't for you, I, I might not be here right now. Instead, I can continue to serve our passengers as a flight attendant. Um, I hope that, well, please accept this as a token of my appreciation. That's... I see. You don't have to take it if you don't want to, if you don't want it. No, I mean, I would never turn down a lady's generous offer. Oh, thank you. I'm sure it will serve you well. And remember, we, we here at iFly Airlines are always ready to serve, Mr. Edgeworth. Thank you all. Keep that in mind. Now I must bid you farewell. May all your skies be blue no matter where you go. I can't believe you wound up investigating the whole day, sir, but boy was it fun. Speak for yourself, my day was filled with earthquakes, elevators, and false charges. By the way, where's Francesca? Oh, she's filling out some custom paperwork for her departure. Departure? Yeah, Miss Von Karma's always really busy, sir. She's been flying from country to country to chase down some leads regarding her case. Detective, can you cancel the car I had you reserve earlier? You got it, sir. Francesca? I thought I told you when you first landed. I have no time for idle chatter. I have no intention of wasting your time, however, it has been a while since we last met. I also have no time for such familiar re reminiscence. Re reminiscences. I just, who do you think I am? You know, Francisca Von Karma, a very proud prosecutor deserving of much respect. Hmm. Until only a little while ago, I was but a wretched mutt who was always losing to you. A dancing Pier Pierrot living her life on the name and fame or invisible, invincible father belt. Sure, your father, man, friend Von Karma, didn't lose a single case for 40 years as a prosecutor. However, I wouldn't say he was invincible. Huh? What are you talking about? The group I'm on the trail of is a little more troublesome than most. The smuggling route we found this time is only one sliver of the big picture. Sounds like a dangerous assignment. You really don't have to worry. I can take care of myself. Yes, I suppose you can. Plus, there's another agent on this case with me. Oh, another agent? He's a star among Interpol agents and has the highest successful arrest rate. Who knows, you may even run into him one day. Hmm, I was simply caught up in this one case. I hardly see why we would, why we would cross paths. 
I suppose. But I doubt he would say the same. I'm not following you. You'll understand soon enough. The fight has only just begun, Miles Edward. I'll be back in this country soon enough. And when I am, you can be sure I'll pay you back in full. And just like that, she's gone, huh, sir? Thank goodness. I can finally rest easy knowing I won't have to watch out for her whip. Detective Gumshaw, I want to thank you for all your help and cooperation. Oh, it was nothing, sir. I was just happy to be able to work with you again. <laughs> I think I'm going to celebrate by adding a little extra salt to my instant noodles tonight. Oh, just how much did you cut a salary by, Francisca? <laughs> Detective, I was wondering if you might give me a ride down to the prosecutor's office. Sure thing, sir. I'll even fly down, to, down the road in the patrol car if you want. Don't let me remind you, Detective. Safety first. <laughs> Thus, I solved the first case upon my arrival home. Franziska von Karma, the smuggling route she was after, the leaders of that ring had already put their trump card into play. And the players on the other side of this war, they would begin to make themselves known through the next incident. Hmm? Edgeworth speaking. Ah, finally, I called the notes how many times earlier, but I couldn't get through. And you are? Ah, have you forgot my voice, Miles, my boy? Mr. Amano? Ernest Amano, correct? Ah, so you do remember me. I know it's rather sudden, but I can't ask this of anyone else. There's been an incident, Miles. My son, he's been kidnapped. Ooh. Coming up in the next case. Yes. All right. So that was Turnabout Airlines. A brand new episode has been added. The Kidnapped Turnabout is what it's called. So we will go ahead and save our game, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for episode two, Turnabout Airlines, for Miles Edgeworth, Ace Attorney Investigations. Tomorrow, we will be starting episode three, the, or kidnap, what is it called? The Kidnapped Turnabout. So, um, so we got Francisco's picture, and we got, uh, this looks like the guy that's on the box right here. Let me kind of show him in the thing here, this guy right here. Yeah, he's got that kind of same outline, so maybe we'll be meeting him soon as well. Maybe that's Ernest Amano. We'll see. So, thanks everybody for watching today's part for Miles Edgeworth, Ace Attorney Investigations. We will be starting episode three tomorrow, and I will see you guys in my next video coming soon. Objection!